There isn't yet a good estimate of how many acres Tuesday's hailstorms damaged, but as we mentioned at the beginning of the show, the damage is widespread. While farms will carry insurance options on a case-by-case -case basis, UNL Extension crop economist Corey Walters says it's important to note the damage must be more than the deductible for a payment to be made. A 75% coverage level would have a 25% deductible, for example. In order to determine what yields could look like after this damage and how producers can be assessing the level of severity in their fields, we talked on campus Thursday with UNL Extension agronomist Roger Elmore. Well, for both corn and soybeans or any crop, uh, the first thing is to uh, assess stands. And, and you know, if you have a crop, uh, if you have crop insurance, certainly contact them immediately. Uh, assess your fields as just a drive-by and see what's going on. Um, and, and, and it's wise then, before you make any critical decision, though, to wait four or five, six days. The weather we're having today isn't really conducive for really rapid regrowth, but you want to wait to make sure that the, ch the plants have a chance to regrow, uh, regenerate new leaves, and, and then assess it uh, sometime early to mid next week uh, is, is the best thing to do. We'll start in corn. Uh, okay. Why is it important to first determine the growing stage of corn before determining what to do with it? Well, the corn uh, in, in the affected area ranged anywhere from probably just planted or I, I think most of the numbers said V4 to V7, which is fourth to seventh leaf. Well, that, that's a critical time at V6. The, the V6 stage is when the growing point actually emerges above the ground and is really susceptible to hail and frost and everything else at that point. Uh, if the growing point is below ground, and most of the corn affected was, based on what I've heard and seen, uh, that plant will have a, a good chance to regrow given good conditions uh, the next few days here. What kind of yield penalty would you expect to have if the growing point was still below ground? Any? If, it's, if that growing point is still viable and alive, there should not be a significant yield loss. Now, I say significant, meaning it's something that, it, it, obviously there's gonna be some yield uh, penalty, but it's very hard to measure, and, and in fact, most of the literature says it doesn't happen at all. But you're regenerating some uh, growth, and, and there's gonna be a setback. Um, so that silking and other things will be a little slower and, and all those things, uh, leaf area will be a little bit less early in the season. That'll impact yields. But basically, if you, you could strip off virtually all the leaves on a V6, V5, V4 plant and in theory not influence yield. You mentioned leaf area. With uh, defoliation and stand reduction, what are some of the things there to keep in mind as you're looking at those fields? Well, it de defoliation again, you can clip those plants off. Now, once you get to V7 and beyond, uh, defoliation becomes a factor. But I think if, if you uh, reduce the leaf area at V7 to V8, um, cut off half the leaf area, you only lose 15 to 20 percent of the yield, something like that. So it's not huge numbers. Um, stand those whole different things. You know, if those growing points are killed, if they do not survive the hail, and that's why in a week you need to assess it, uh, the stand reductions is, is what will hurt you worse at this stage in, in, in the growth cycle of corn. In the absolute worst case scenario, if you had to replant, is replant even an option in corn? Oh, sure, sure. Uh, you know, we're talking uh, probably replanting the 10th of June now because it's wet. Uh, yield reductions, uh, uh, are, are really significant, probably 40, 40 to 50 percent yield reduction for planting uh, in, in the 10th of June, somewhere in there. Uh, the tables say that very clearly. Um, so when you compare a small stand loss from hail at this point uh, versus a replant, uh, as it, it's a lot easier to take a small stand loss than to replant. Uh, the, some of the numbers I looked at the other day showed you could really drop populations down to about 20,000 plants per acre on corn and still get, uh, you know, I think the yields were in the 80 percentile range versus 50 to 60 percentile range if you replant. So um, assess the stands, assess them well. Moving to soybeans, sure. what are things that you would look for there to try and assess damage? The, the same thing, basically. Uh, up until the flowering time, defoliation does not technically influence yield. Uh, on our indeterminate varieties that we're growing mostly here in Nebraska. So again, it, it's, it's a key thing on looking for viable plants, 
and, and, and we can talk about what those look like. Uh, assessing stands. Uh, and again, you can take a stand reduction down to 75 to 100,000 plants per acre this time of year and still do far better than a replant. It's the same thing. You know, the calendar is working against us in terms of uh, a replanting because the yield, yield losses on both crops are going down significantly. Um, but the positive thing in terms of where we are in the growth season uh, for both crops, the defoliation doesn't have a huge impact on yields. With, uh, you mentioned, uh, you know, trying to find those viable plants, mm -hmm. trying to find the cotyledon and the buds, how would you go about trying to find those and counting those on the plants? Well, you, you hands and knees type of work. Uh, you, you dig plants uh, on soybeans uh, in, in a week or so, you'll be able to see the buds regenerating. Uh, on soybeans, let's talk about that. At, at, at the cotyledons, there are two uh, axial buds, and either one of those can generate a whole new plant. The unifoliate nodes, uh, the next one up, which are the two single leaves that are opposite each other, there's a bud on each side of that. So already we're talking four possible buds on a plant that doesn't even have a trifoliate out yet. So there's a lot of buds and potential for regrowth uh, on soybeans.